In the previous lecture, we discussed how the evolution of deploying software modules into standardized packages that could run nearly anywhere was called containers, or containerization. You may recall that this movement towards containerization has created a new need to define and manage the life cycle of these containers and how these containers interact with each other to create a larger, interesting, and useful software system. The de facto standard for container orchestration is now Kubernetes. Kubernetes was born out of a project of Google's internal need for container orchestration. It was first announced in 2014 and has grown into a mature product, currently at version 1.8, with support and growth in the enterprise and most major cloud providers. Kubernetes, as a product, is governed in standards and deployment and development by a public process led by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, also known as the CNCF. Much like the Linux model, Kubernetes has itself been repackaged into distributions with support and other commercialized offerings by large vendors, many of whom themselves are members of the CNCF, with many of the changes and improvements that they make going back into the open source project. Kubernetes enjoys a major lead in technology maturity and adoption for a variety of reasons. First, Kubernetes and its predecessor, Google Borg, go back to the very beginning of container orchestration. It simply has a head start on solving a very complicated problem. But that's not enough to sow a large advantage, of course. That dovetails with the second. Kubernetes and the people around it, especially its founders, have taken this organizational knowledge and preserved and grown it through the CNCF and a public stewardship process that allows Kubernetes to grow unlike proprietary technologies. Kubernetes has been free to be bigger than any one vendor's market share and has gained the trust and commitments of its users and the open source community at large, in large part by avoiding vendor lock-in, but allowing access to the kind of support and assured quality large vendors can offer through their own distributions. That is not to say that Kubernetes was or is without its competitors. Docker, the company that created Docker containers themselves that Kubernetes uses by default, has its own orchestration offering, for example. However, as it relates to Docker Swarm or even Apache Mesos, another mature orchestration project, Kubernetes has several distinct advantages at the moment. First, its lineage has given it quite a lead time in both time and pedigree. It never hurts to be born at Google, solving problems at Google scale. Second, it's not just achieved critical mass, it's actually grown to sustainability. And the CNCF organization provides some permanence to this, especially as every major cloud vendor and many major software vendors have joined the organization. As for the code, just look at the commits, follows, and stars of the various Kubernetes projects. They speak for themselves. Third, Kubernetes offers auto-scaling that continues to mature and does not introduce provider-specific details, but lets you leverage many cloud providers' implementation by abstracting them intelligently into common configuration files. This makes for an ease of deployment across hybrid clouds or public clouds or any type of deployment infrastructure. Kubernetes is a technology and software package you can run on your own, on your laptop, your own server hardware, your data centers, cloud providers, or a combination of them all if you'd like. In the next lecture, we'll discuss where to get started, how you can set up Kubernetes on each, no matter where or what path you plan to choose or need in your particular application.